Well, it's Monday morning, and uh, we've got a fresh start on things. Now, it's kind of a godsend that uh, we didn't put it all together, and we didn't have brake shoes to do that with, because my friend Pete fucked up. You know, I thought about it and thought about it, and there's no fucking way, there's no fucking way that the bracket can go on the front of this. Okay, it's got to go on the back. And what I did is I didn't even think about it because I was so pissed off that I'm, you know, working on Sunday and, you know, uh, things aren't fucking right and it's late at night and I'm rushing through it and I'm not paying attention. But you know what? What the situation is, we're going to have to take all this off because there's a few modifications that we're going to have to do to this to make it work right. And, uh... This bracket has got to go on the back. It can't go on the front. There's just no way. So let me get this apart real quick, and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Okay, what we're looking at here, we're looking at this bracket sitting on the front, but you know what? You can't have the brake on the front. You can't have the caliper on the front, so there's no way that that would be right. It has to be turned around. So I started thinking, if we put it on this way, of course, it's going to sit too low and our control arm's going to be in the way, this, that, and the other. So what if we flip it over, then turn it around? I think that's what needs to be done. And uh, I'm pretty much basically sure that's what needs to be done, because if you set the caliper like this, you're going to see... Okay, let me get my hand out of the way there. You'll see that the bracket pretty much uh, looks like it would work right there in that area. So, let me get this thing off and uh, we'll flip it all around. Put our rotor back on and I think we'll be in good shape. I went and bought some brake pads today. So, uh, wow. Don't always, uh, don't always uh, go exactly by the directions. This is a good example that uh, directions are not necessarily perfectly right all the time. And what can I say? Always put your Carter keys back where they go. Don't chicken shit yourself and think you don't fucking need them when you do. To. There's my phone. Let me get it. Okay. Southwest. Uh, Randy and Napa, I need to holler. Yes. Yeah, Randy. What's up? Uh, Pete, I have no shots here. Okay, I'll be up there at lunch. Right. I'll see you later. Okay, bye. Okay, uh, we found some other problems on our Buick here. Uh, what the problem is, is the front suspension is very, very weak. I've already went over that with you and on the left hand side of the vehicle what we found is that uh, the shock is literally broken off of the lower control arm and it's been that way for several several years uh, we're going to have to modify that lower control arm up we're going to have to weld a bracket to it so we can uh, put the shock back on there we're going to go ahead and replace the shocks but right now we're not even doing that see we're not even talking about that 
because we're not worried about that, what we're doing here is we are replacing these brakes with disc brakes. Okay? So, now what I gotta do is I gotta put this rotor back on. I make sure that my, see that adapter right there? That's very important. Okay, let's slide that on there. Brand new caliper pin here. We're gonna slide it in. Just like so. I believe we're on the right track now. There. Okay. I think we're going to be all right there. It spins free. Everything looks good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and knock the tips off of this. I'm going to use my grinder to do that. And that's going to allow my dust cap to fit in a little better than it is right now. See? Get out of the way. going to fit in there super tight like it's supposed to but it'll give it more of a locking lip than what we had on there see now what we got to do is uh we got to go ahead and load our uh caliper okay i'm gonna get the bolts out okay what we got to do is we got to load our caliper get that bolt there there, out of the way. There we go. We're going to load it with our brake shoes. Now, I went and bought me some brand new brake shoes over at Napa, the True Stop brand. We're going to go ahead and put those in. Now, you got the option. These are anti uh, squealing, anti squeak brake setup because it's got the two locking. Uh, you can see right there it locks it on there very tight if you don't have those what you'd want to do is uh, I don't even have it. you want to take some silicone and go ahead and fill yourself up some silicone in this area right in here okay and what that'll do that'll keep your brakes from squeaking since this has got the uh, clips on it okay we're not going to do that it's a very simple installation here and uh, before I do that I always like to test my bracket to see to make sure that that bra that uh, rear brake pad fits in between. I like to take my uh, brake pad, my rear brake pad, and I like to slide it in to make sure that it's going to fit in between the slot. And I notice this one here fits just a little, little too tight. So what I'll do is I take my grinder, because this aftermarket stuff does not fit like factory, okay, and does need... What I'm going to do is just, just grinding a little bit of the lid off. Around the corners out. I'm being careful not to hit the pad itself, okay? So then we're going to test it one more time, and I see that it's got enough. Now it slides in there real nice if you look, okay? And that should fit in there very, very nice. Okay, so now the hard part comes where uh, we got to slide this bastard on here, and it's a heavy motherfucker. So I'm going to try to do this where y'all can see it. There it is. Went on nice. I like that, see? We're going to get those, going to move it around, get the bolt started on it. Make sure your hole lines up. This is probably the first time that this has ever been taken off of here, so you can imagine what kind of situation we got. There it is 
right there. Sometimes it's better to use vice grips instead of your hand on that. There you go. Get more leverage, see? And when you do a job like that, just do a little bit at a time. Okay? A little bit at a time is all it takes. You don't want to make it too big. You don't want to make it too sloppy. All I'm trying to do is fit that in there where, it'll work, where I can lock it in place. And if you notice, there it is right there. Now I'll be able to go ahead and put my bracket on it. So what I'm trying to show you here as I'm doing this, I'm trying to show you that it's a little more difficult when you're doing this type of work, okay? It's a little bit more difficult than what's really, uh, you know, looking you in the face, okay? It's a little bit more difficult than you think. And you need to be prepared for the situation at hand of what we're looking at here, see? So we'll go ahead and knock this on here. Okay. Now our clip's on there nice and tight. And, uh... Looks like uh, that's in place. And when you install your rubber hose to your calipers, and this basically goes for all, uh, this basically is a situation for all uh, disc brakes, make sure that you install your two copper washers, uh, one on each side of the rubber hose, okay? That's very, very important. Now we got to get in here and get this started, just like so. The fucking brake line is giving us a pain in the ass. So I'm going to go ahead and get the other side done, okay? Everything looks like it's uh, in perfect order here. Okay, that's basically the situation you have. Let me move that back. Okay. What we've done, we have actually converted our drum brakes on our 1955 Buick to our uh, brand new updated Y2K disc brake setup. We had a few little problems we ran into, but we fixed them, see? And that's what it's all about. Uh, this kit here cost approximately, I'm just guessing I didn't buy them, but I'm just guessing from purchasing other kits, probably about $600, okay? The, she probably, the owner probably spent 600 bucks on all the parts. Okay, and the kit that you uh, buy is basically just the bracket, okay, and the bearing uh, sleeve, okay? Do you see what I'm saying? And then they give you a list to buy all this other stuff. Now, keep in mind, on the list, when the uh, owner brought her car over, on the, she went to the store and bought all the parts that was on the list, and there wasn't no brake pads on the list, so... That was actually a good thing for us because uh, we almost fucked up. And uh, I don't like fucking up, but I fuck up. You fuck up, I fuck up. We all fuck up sometime, okay? Uh, do I feel like a jackass because I had the bracket on backwards and there's probably a viewer out there and it's maybe you right there that said, man, that guy's a dipshit. He did it wrong. No, I don't feel bad because I stopped and I thought about the situation before I even finished the job. And that's what you need to do. Okay, instead of getting in a fucking rush, instead of slopping it together, think it out. If you think it's wrong, stop. Investigate the situation, investigate the problem, and see where the problem will lead you. And then if you believe that that's the right way, and you still feel that it's wrong, okay, I would suggest to go to a junkyard. I would suggest to call Napa Auto Parts. I would suggest to do something to make sure that you are 100% right that the problem is... Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.